Hey everyone, welcome back to This Homemade Life. In case you're new, my name is Courtney, and every single Monday I put out one of these What's For Dinner videos highlighting all the meals that I made for my family of five over the past week. If you guys like these kind of videos, or grocery hauls, or just kind of mom lifestyle videos, then go ahead and click that like and subscribe button to keep up with all of my content because that is what I do here on my channel. Anyway, this week was full of a lot of winners. We had a lot of great meals, things we were all really, really happy with. As usual, I will either list the recipe or link the recipe down below in the description box so you guys can try this one at home. Let's get to cooking. So this week's meals kicked off with something super simple. I think it's called Italian chicken. I've made it a couple of times here at the house before and uh, my guys like it. I'm not the biggest fan, but it is quick, it's simple, it really didn't take much work. The recipe, I think, calls for chicken breast. I only had chicken thighs. And then it calls for a whole block of cream cheese, which I think is just too much. So I put in half a block of cream cheese. I cubed it like that and just placed it on top of the chicken. Then I added some pepper and some Italian seasoning. You can kind of add in whatever seasonings you want. I would not add salt because we're about to add salad dressing, a vinaigrette. I also added in some onion and garlic powder. You can do that if you want, you don't have to. The recipe calls for olive garden dressing, but I had this in my fridge open and ready to go. So I just went ahead and poured in this Greek dressing and personally, I think this actually tasted a little bit better. Really any kind of vinaigrette's gonna work great. I've even seen some people try this with Caesar dressing, which is super creamy, but it worked. So you try whatever you want, just pop it in your crock pot or your slow cooker or whatever. And I did mine low and slow for like eight hours. You can do yours on high if you're in a hurry, but I think low is better just so the cream cheese doesn't scald. This is what it looks like when it's all cooked. And I just took my meat masher and just kind of like mashed it and mixed it. It shreds the chicken and it thickens the sauce up because the cream cheese mixes into it. The chicken kind of absorbs some of the liquid back in once you shred it. And it makes a great topper for pasta. I just cook some elbow noodles and put it on top with a little extra cracked black pepper. So on to the next night. I wanted some potato salad and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to make yet, but I wanted some potato salad. So let's make some potato salad. I started off with these three potatoes. They were the last of a bag that I had in my pantry. They were kind of sad looking. They definitely needed to be used. So I went ahead and peeled them. And if there were any bad spots, I cut those off. And then I went ahead and cubed these. Now for potato salad, I like to cube my potatoes a little bit bigger than what you actually want them to be because once they cook, they are going to kind of fall apart a little bit. So the pieces that are left behind are going to be smaller than what you started with. So here I am just chopping them, like I said, bigger than bite-sized pieces because they will definitely shrink up quite a bit. Once I've gotten all three of these potatoes chopped and diced to whatever shape you want, I just did like kind of a rough chop like that. I'm gonna put mine in a, a skillet. I know a lot of people do like stock pots and stuff like that. It's gonna cook a lot faster if you have a big skillet you can put this in. It takes less water and it takes less time to heat it up to a boil. So once I am done dicing up all three of these potatoes, you'll see me pull out my largest skillet. Um, I think this guy is like 14 inches, I can't remember exactly, but I poured the potatoes in there, and this was a lot of potatoes, because those are Texas-sized potatoes, is a lot of potatoes. But I poured the potatoes in, turned on the burner, and then poured in enough water to just cover the top of the potatoes. I did put a lid on mine, and I let them boil until they were fork tender, where I could stick a fork in, and it comes out clean, there's no resistance. That's when I know that they are done. Now, some people like to cool their potatoes before they make potato salad, Personally, I don't like my potato salad to be super cold when I eat it, and I just go ahead and start making everything when it's still hot and steamy. I also feel like the mayonnaise and stuff kind of mixes in a little bit better because it heats up the fats inside of there. So for this loaded baked potato salad, we need some mayonnaise and some sour cream, and then my camera cut out because I'm having so much trouble with this camera, y'all. I'm actually rotating between my phone and the camera. But anyway, it's... Um, I did three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of sour cream. Then I added in some bacon pieces and some green onions, some salt, some pepper, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and I mixed it all together. And then the recipe calls for shredded cheese. You guys know my oldest doesn't like cheese. So I just put the cheese individually into my servings and my husband's servings because we were the only ones that wanted cheese in it. 
This is really, really good. We actually ate this with a couple of different meals this week, as you'll see. Uh, and it was fantastic. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I'll be making it again with it heating up outside. I'm totally in the mood for cold salads like this. They just really are perfect this time of year. All right, guys, time to make a BLT. I'm going to toast this bread. This is Italian bread. I got it, obviously, on the clearance rack at Walmart. I've got some bacon I cooked back here. We also have turkey bacon if anybody wants it. I have this baby arugula, and as you can see, it is washed and ready to eat. How fantastic. I have some tomatoes that you saw me prep in my meal prep video this week, salt and pepper, and mayonnaise. And then, of course, on the side, we will serve that potato salad that I showed you guys that I made. And, of course, for my husband's and mine, I will be adding some shredded cheese. Obviously not for my oldest, because we all know he does not like cheese. My little ones don't eat potato salad, but there is some corn on the cob that they are happy with. So there we go. That's dinner. All right, guys, I am getting ready to throw together a stir fry. This is definitely pantry cooking. This is all stuff that I pulled out of my pantry or my freezer, and I'm throwing together to make this meal. Even though I went and got groceries this week, I was trying to eat out of my freezer and get some of the stuff out of there that I've had for a while, stuff that... We just weren't into. So tonight I'm making a stir fry. This is going to be our meat, this sirloin Philly steak. I've actually used this to make ramen before. It's really, really good. You can use it for a lot of different things. So if you get it on sale, it's a great deal. Um, in the stir fry, I'm going to put some chopped broccoli. I had one box of that that I don't even know how long it's been in there. So I definitely need to use that. So I just thawed it in the microwave and drained the water. One zucchini that was in my fridge looking all sad. So I chopped him up. Some onion. This will be for both the fried rice and the stir fry. And then I had a can of water chestnuts. They were whole and I just sliced them up. And then, of course, some garlic. And because I'm almost out in there, another garlic. And that will be for the stir fry. The peas are for the fried rice. Usually I use peas and carrots, like a mix. But I had that and it's open, so we're going with that. And then for the stir fry, we're going to make a sauce with some peanut butter, honey, soy sauce, hoisin, and pepper. If I feel like I need to, I'll throw in some salt, but I've got soy salt sauce, so I don't see why. But I'm going to make the sauce first. Then we're going to go ahead and get to stir frying. And I have already cooked my rice. There. Um, it's just been hanging on my stove. So waiting for me coming up to room temperature, I put it in the fridge and now I pulled it back out. And we will use this to make the fried rice. You always want to have like already cooked rice that's chilled in the fridge and stuff. And I'm going to go get some eggs. You guys know I have eggs because I bought a whole ton of eggs. Anyway, we're going to make a meal. Let's do it. Okay, so first off, can I just say, I think I'm on a mission to dirty up every bowl in my house with this. Um, wow, this is an excessive amount of dishes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start off with some peanut butter. I'm going for like a peanut sauce. I just wanted something different. So I'm going to do probably about a tablespoon of peanut butter. You can do more. You can do less. You can leave it out if you want to. Totally up to you. And I'll probably go get a fork in a minute to kind of whisk this together. I'm going to add some soy sauce. Probably about, I don't know, two or so tablespoons of soy sauce. Then I'm going to add in some honey. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Maybe about a tablespoon. I don't know. And then some hoisin. I love this stuff. Probably about three tablespoons of this. And then finally, a little bit of sesame seed oil just because just because <laughs> so sometimes I do buy like the pre-made sauces the Panda Express sauces and stuff at the grocery store but typically because I keep the stuff on hand hoisin sauce soy sauce honey peanut butter garlic all that kind of stuff I just find it easier to make my own and I've done it a number of different times in these videos. Sometimes I'll even throw a little bit of barbecue sauce in there for kind of a smoky effect. It's super, super good. Tonight, you saw that simple sauce. We're going to use that in a minute, but first we're going to start by sauteing some onions in my wok and then we're going to add in some of that zucchini and just let this cook for a little bit. We're not looking to make it like super soft and translucent. We just want to cook it on a high heat, get a little bit of a sear on there add some flavor to it. So while that was doing its thing, I hopped over to my other skillet. I added a little bit of sesame oil and a little bit of olive oil. I feel like the sesame oil 
is really, really strong. So I kind of like to mix the two oils together. But I do like a little bit of the flavor from the uh, sesame oil. So once that oil was hot, I went ahead and added in a little bit of that onion. Most of it went in the stir fry, but I did add a little bit over here for the fried rice. I cooked that for just like a couple of minutes, and then I added in my rice that had been waiting for me. I did cook it earlier in the day, put it in the fridge, and then pulled it back out so it would warm up a little bit. Super cold rice is a little harder to work with because it's really hard. Uh, this was not quite up to room temperature, but it was good enough. You definitely want to use, you know, leftover rice for fried rice. It just works so much better. Once that kind of heated up a little bit, I went ahead and added in some garlic. I actually like a lot of garlic in my fried rice. I don't add a whole ton of things to it, so I like onion and garlic to really carry a lot of the flavor for me. Then I went ahead and dumped in some of those frozen peas. Definitely use frozen if you guys are making this. Do not use canned peas. They just mush up and fall apart. They're fine if you're serving them, you know, as a side dish for dinner or whatever. But if you're going to be cooking them like this where you're stirring them and moving them around and they're going to go through a lot, they're just going to fall apart. Definitely stick with frozen. Once those peas hit thawed, I added in some hoisin sauce. Now, I like a lot of hoisin. I probably did like a quarter of a cup in there. You don't have to do as much if you don't want to, but I do have uh, four cups of rice, I think it is, that I cooked. So, I mean, it's a good amount of rice. We like rice at my house. We eat a lot of rice. Everyone in my house eats rice, so I typically will make a lot of it just because even if we didn't have leftover stir fry, this fried rice would get eaten no problem. So once that had kind of incorporated into the rice, I scoot all the rice over to the side, add a little bit more oil on this empty side, and then I throw in some eggs. You can do as few or as many as you want. If you don't like eggs, you don't even have to add them. My family loves eggs, so I did five eggs. I know it sounds like a lot, but they really like eggs. So I went ahead and just put the lid on the pan, and they were just cooking while I was over here working on the stir fry again. As you can see, there's a little caramelization, a little color going on, which is what we want, but the vegetables are still firm. So I took the last two of those little frozen steak things and put them in the middle of the wok. I had had them sitting out for a while, but they had not thawed. So I'm basically just kind of trying to thaw them a little bit in here. I did go ahead and add some cracked black pepper to everything in the pan. And then I realized that I have a much better tool for this than that spoon. So I pulled out my little meat chopper thing from the Dollar Tree. I love this tool. This is like the best tool I think I've purchased for my kitchen in a long, long time. But I just went to town kind of chopping up this meat and it did a fantastic job just like I knew it would. I uh, The meat is raw, so I do have to let it cook for a little while. Once it's broken up, I kind of like mixed it into everything and let it get all incorporated with the vegetables. And we're gonna let that cook and hang out for just a little bit. I'm gonna add in anything else here that you have veggie wise. So you can add in whatever you want. This is what I just happen to have in my pantry and my freezer. For me, it's water, chestnuts, and broccoli. For you, it could be frozen spinach or any other frozen vegetable. Maybe you want some regular peanuts. I don't know, it's totally up to you guys. So then while that was heating up, I came over and checked on my eggs. They were just starting to get color, which is absolutely perfect in fried rice. So I went ahead and kind of chopped them up and then mixed them into the rest of the rice. This is almost completely done. The last thing I'm going to do here is add some uh, soy sauce and a little bit of, no, just soy sauce. I've already added the garlic for some reason. I thought I hadn't added it, but I did. So it's just soy sauce. You want to do that at the very, very end once you're about to turn the burner off. Soy sauce burns and it burns very easily and it alters the flavor. So definitely do this at the very, very end so that you're not messing up your fried rice. I added it and then immediately turned off the burner and we're done. This is going to sit and hang out and wait for me while I finish with the stir fry, which is almost done by the way. Take a look at it. Everything's cooked. We're going to add in the garlic over here. I knew I was adding in garlic somewhere. We're going to add it in right here. I was pretty heavy handed with it because you guys know we like garlic. My pan looked a little dry, so I added a little bit more oil and I'm going to let the garlic just kind of hang out and heat up and, you know, make friends with everybody in the pan for just a couple of minutes, not long at all because we don't want it to burn. And then we're going to go ahead and add in our sauce that we made. That's the very last thing I do here just because... The sauce has honey in it, which will caramelize and burn if you're not careful. So I added it in at the very, very end. 
and went ahead and turned the heat off, mixed everything around, and just let it sit in that hot pan for just like two or three minutes so that the sauce would kind of soak up into every, everything that I have in there. And then I just served this on top of the fried rice. The colors are kind of similar, so it wasn't the most beautiful dish that I have ever made, but it tasted really, really good. This was pantry cooking at its best. And my family thoroughly enjoyed this, and we we would definitely eat this again. All right, so I was going to make some rimps, which I'll show you in a minute. They were nothing fancy, but I wanted something good to go with them. I've been seeing people make different kinds of crusty bread in their Dutch ovens, so I had to jump on the trend and try it. I do actually have a sourdough starter I've been working on for quite some time. So instead of using yeast, I put some warm water in my bowl with some of my sourdough starter and a little bit of honey, and I let it get all nice and frothy and happy. And then I added in some salt and my flour. And then we're just going to mix this together. I, I was looking at it, you know, I've worked with a lot of doughs before, and I was a little concerned by the texture, but I didn't touch it. I just let it do its thing. And sure enough, it came together to make a very, very sticky dough, which is what I was expecting. Everything I read said that it was super sticky, not a dough you're going to be kneading or working with or anything. And it did exactly as promised. As you can see, it's pulling away from the sides beautifully. I just went ahead and let this mix and work up the gluten a little bit for a few minutes. And then I just covered this with some clean wrap and set it off to the side. And I let it proof for like two hours. Then I came back and I put a piece of parchment paper down on my countertop and I sprinkled a little bit of flour on it because this is so, so sticky. <laughs> and then I poured the dough out and the instructions said to kind of like make it into a loaf or a ball, depending on the shape of your, your Dutch oven. If it's round, a ball, if it's an oval, you want more of a loaf shape. So I'm trying to do what the instructions said and... If I had a loaf one, that would be fantastic, but I have a round Dutch oven. So I realized that uh, this was not the right shape. <laughs> I It was super sticky. I was having a hard time with it. And finally, I just poured out a little bit more flour, and I was able to kind of work it with my hands a little bit. And then I scooped the excess flour off because you want flour on the dough itself, but not as much flour on the paper as I ended up with. So I did go ahead and scoop that off. The flour will kind of burn a little bit. I didn't want that much on there, but I made a nice little round loaf shape there. And your Dutch oven should be preheating in your 450 degree oven, I think it is, which is what mine was doing. It had been in there for half an hour. It was nice and piping hot. So parchment paper and all goes right into that Dutch oven. Then we place the lid back on top and we cook this. I don't have my recipe in front of me. I think it was like 30 minutes. I will link everything that I've made down below in the description box for you guys. And then for the last 10 minutes, you take the lid off. Look at that. I was so impressed. I've never made bread that beautiful before. Here's the ribs I served it with. You could do this with chicken. You could do this with pork chops. You could do this with ribs. You could do it with any kind of rib, beef, pork, whatever. This is just something simple I've done for years. You can do it in a slow cooker or you can do it in your oven. Totally up to you. I just make sure this is laid out flat and pour some barbecue sauce on it and let it go in the slow cooker for quite some time. If you're doing it in the oven, wrap it up in foil and cook it on the lowest setting you have for a couple of hours, you know, like probably three hours. And you get some nice, tender, juicy barbecue pulled whatever meat you're going to have. This ended up being uh, pulled pork ribs. They were boneless country ribs, I think. And I served it with the leftover uh, loaded baked potato salad, that homemade bread. It was awesome. The last meal I am making this week is pancakes. As you saw, I used the box mix and I used plant-based butter because Cam likes to eat pancakes. I also used almond milk. He cannot have dairy. I let this get warm and I just used some of that vegan butter and put it on there. And then I put four pancakes on the pan and it went so much better than when I did my meal prep video the other day. One of mine gave me a little trouble, but not like it did the other day. It flipped and it was still a nice, beautiful pancake. I just cooked this whole thing. I think um, I did like half the box of mix for my whole family. Everybody eats pancakes, and I had a few leftovers, but they were gone by the next morning. They were just completely wiped out. My people like pancakes, y'all. They love their pancakes. So anyway, the only thing I do different than the box mix is I add in a little bit of maple syrup just for some extra flavor and a little bit of vanilla extract. I don't do anything super fancy, but the pancakes were awesome. Like I said, they went quickly. I did have some bacon that I was cooking in the oven, and I wish I had been paying closer attention because the ends of it got a little overcooked, but that's all right. No big deal. I also uh, was going to make some fried eggs, and then I had one of those boxes of the uh, shelf-stable potatoes 
the, the like hash brown potatoes. I think it's Hungry Jack brand. I've seen people make them before. So I'm like, I'm going to try it. I saw them at Dollar Tree. I picked up the box. They were okay. I would totally do it again, but I didn't realize how small of an amount they were going to be. Basically, you just open the card and you add hot water and let it set for like 10 to 15 minutes. And then you're going to pour those softened potato shreds into a greased pan and kind of fry them up like regular potatoes. And they were definitely easier to work with than fresh potatoes. It didn't take as long in the skillet to brown up. But I would definitely need to get more than one box. That's one box right there. So I also cooked up a few of those little crispy round tater tot looking things you buy in the freezer section because I had just a small amount. So some of us got those hash brown potatoes, which I didn't eat them, but my husband and my oldest said they were really good. The rest of us got those little crispy rounds in place of hash browns, and I just served some fried eggs on top, bacon on the side, and those pancakes. And we had ourselves a really awesome breakfast for dinner. I do this every once in a while, and it's always different. Sometimes it's pancakes or waffles or sausage biscuits or a lot of fruit with some toast and eggs. It just really depends on what I have hanging out in my fridge that needs to be used up and how much time I have to prep it. But breakfast is always a winner. And then if you have leftovers or if you have time, make a whole bunch so you have leftovers and you've got breakfast for the next couple of days. And it just makes your life so, so much easier that way. Um, like I said, my family definitely chowed down on those leftover pancakes. They didn't last long. And those hash browns are cooking beautifully. As you can see, it's just not a whole ton of hash browns if you have a family of five, especially if one of them is your husband and your fully grown son because they eat a lot. <laughs> um, they, they did crisp up beautifully, though. I would totally make these again, and I think I've heard that Sam's Club sells them in a big box. I will be keeping an eye out for that. But anyway, here's a peek at what our breakfast for dinner looked like. It was awesome, and I'm sure you'll see something similar again in the future because I do this pretty often. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for this week's What's for Dinner video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed sharing it with you and putting it together. And all the food that we cooked, really, I can't complain. It was definitely a good week at my house. Today is actually Easter for me while I am filming this intro and outro. So I hope you guys all had a wonderful Easter with your family filled with lots of fun, memories, and good food. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a fantastic week, and I will see you back on Wednesday with another video. Bye.